So welcome to my happy space. Every summer I like to uh, load up my family and my poodle in the RV and I head off to the mountains and that's where I relax and I recharge. And as I'm looking at some of these mountains in the Rockies, whether it's the Grand Tetons or Yellowstone, I'm like, you know, there's a lot of similarities between these mountains and our government and our country. You know, they're majestic, they're historic, they're huge. But they're also complicated and challenging. So as I was hearing the stories and reading in the park exhibits and those kinds of things about the, the brave guys that went forward and opened up the West, Lewis and Clarks, and figured out a way to get through the mountains, open up opportunities for our country, I'm like, you know, I wonder if we could have that kind of impact. Can we make government better? Can we expose opportunities? Can we make it more efficient? Can we make it more cost effective? Can we be smarter? And Joe and I are here because we absolutely believe that the answer to that question is yes. And we'd like to share some of that passion and a little bit of our journey with you today. So ESC, as she said, we're in the Department of Transportation in the Federal Aviation Administration located in Oklahoma City. We are a federally designated shared service provider, and as she said, we support over 43 different agencies, and we support them with administrative services. So I'm talking about bravery, and I'm talking about excitement, and I'm talking about administrative services. Maybe you don't think that that matches. Well, I'll tell you, for our customers, it does matter. So whether they're the Federal Aviation Administration looking at aviation safety and security, whether it's highways and looking at our infrastructure across our country, every piece of the administrative burden that we take off of their shoulders, whether it's resources or money, it helps them really focus back on their business and do their core responsibilities. So. Another aspect of shared services that's important to us is that we run like a business. We're part of a franchise fund, we're cost reimbursable, and we're really looking to get those synergies by eliminating the duplicative services or the duplicative systems across government. Everybody doesn't need their own particular administrative services. So we're looking to reduce the cost of government by doing that. We've got a real diverse portfolio. We do financial services and procurement services. That's about half of our portfolio. We also do travel. We do hosting. We've got a core group that does information security for other government agencies, does those security screens. We do mission solution applications. Some of you may be familiar with Aviator. That's the application that works with USA Job for onboarding air traffic controllers. So we do that type of work. We've got one of the best rates for national wireless devices in government. And we also have a really adept and talented print media crew. You'll see some of the kind of work that they're doing as we go through the presentation today. Uh, one of their specialties is informational and training videos. So we do that kind of work across government. So where did we begin? We began back in 2012. And like mo most of us, we began at the team level. We had a small team, about 20 people, and they had a team leader, me, that went out and started looking at books and came across this thing called Agile. And when I started reading it, I started sharing it with my team and I started asking them, does this make sense? Should we be doing this? And they said, yeah. And I said, can we self-organize? Can we have a real lean, agile team? And they said, yeah. So we did it. And when we did it, we were very successful. Well, how do I know we were successful? Our customers told us we were successful. They were very happy and pleased with the product that we were producing for them. Matter of fact, one of our internal customers went ahead and put us in for an award. But we were missing something. We were missing scaling Agile. We were missing 
the strategic part of the enterprise being coupled with the team and the tactical part of the enterprise. So we went looking and we said, is there anything out there that can help us with this? Being a federal agency, we did have some requirements. We found Scaled Agile Framework. When we found the Scaled Agile Framework, we looked at it. I brought it to my executives. And I said, take a look at this. Look, they have roles and they have responsibilities that we could map to. Look, they have the flexibility for us to scale up and down if we need to. Look, they include their leadership. Look, they have the rigor in there so that we can be in compliance and be able to pass audits. So I was able to sell them on this. And they said, Joe, we're from Missouri. We want you to show us. Show us that this can work. And we're going to prime you for success. We're going to send you to, to school, SPC. We're going to bring in an external change agent to help us on this journey. We're going to also have an executive sponsor for you, someone that will be your champion, someone that will support us. And oh, by the way, we happen to have a pretty significant project that's coming up that is meaningful to the enterprise, and we want you to take this into a lean, agile framework. And don't mess it up. Mm. <laughs> so we did it. We went out. We got volunteers to come on the, onto this team. They self-organized. I was the PO slash coach. We brought in a scrum master, Scotty Saul, and we went off to the races. And lo and behold, at the end of the day, on that tipping point, we had a database hardware refresh delivered five weeks ahead of schedule. How do I know five weeks ahead of schedule? Because they had a project management plan for it. And we were comparing ourselves against that project management plan. And you could see all of the um, capabilities and everything that we had, the benefits. But here's the real benefit. We proved it. The executives were brought in and they said, go forth and conquer, implement. All right, so we went forth and we conquered and we implemented. So that year, we were still doing one, two, three implementation where we were training our managers, training our leaders, training our executives. And we started doing value stream mapping workshops. We started doing portfolio management workshops. We started going out and talking to the resource managers. We started going out there and talking to the, um, the potential scrum masters. And we started organizing the team. The other thing that we did, we went to, we went to the executives. Our external ch change agent came up with this and said, Hey, why don't we reach out to Scaled Agile? Why don't we have them help us with this first implementation? So we did. And lo and behold, they sent us Dr. Steve Maynard. What a great contribution that was. That truly helped us. Now, were there challenges? Sure. Were there some setbacks? Yes, Robin's gonna talk about that. But we were successful. One of the things that executive after executive, manager after manager came to me and said was, wow, you made all of this visible. I did not realize how complex this was. I did not realize all the risks that we have, and now I do. So then we were all, all in, and we started training for the RTEs and SPCs. So you're going to see some of the pictures of the train up and the spin up for the art uh, and some of the participation that we had. So this is us doing the training and conducting the training classes. This is prior to, prior to the PIP, we started some of the training classes. This is our external change agent that's on there doing it. This is yours truly in there. And we continue to do that. 
Then when we went out there and looked to see if Scaled Agile could come in, they did. There's Dr. Maynard in the background. Oh, by the way, we had to do a lot of our training in the auditorium. We didn't have a big open space, but we did not allow that to stop us. We had executives that were involved. That's our enterprise architect there that's involved. I love the look on his face. These are our leaders and our managers, along with some of our SPCs that came in to help us. And they're pondering things over and doing whatever executives and managers do. So then it came time to do our first PI. And I think everybody can kind of relate. Everybody knows what that first PI was like, uh, launching that first art. I like the previous speaker's comments about, oh my gosh, we found all this work that didn't need to be done. And I think all of us have stories like that. Well, we've got a couple of stories. One of our stories was we were ready to do this. Joe had us ready. Joe had us enthusiastic. Uh, but there were some things that were not ideal. So we actually wound up holding our first PI in the hallway. And we were successful at it. It wasn't pretty. You can see we're all on top of each other, but we got through. And interestingly enough, the team that participated bought in enough that when I wasn't able to find spaces and places, they went out and found them for the next run. So I thought that was really interesting. The other thing that really reinforced the initial commitment that we had to this and said, we got to have more of this, we've got to do this, is when we went in and we did our first management review, it became glaringly obvious on the walls that we had an absolute train wreck. We had a deliverable, other people relate to that? We had a deliverable that we had committed to. We had too much whip. We had people focused all over the place, and it was a mess. And we didn't see it coming. We had been motoring along on our individual stovepipe plans, and we hit this wall. And so the management team rolled up their sleeves, and Steve helped us work it out. And we're there 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. And we reprioritized, clarified uh, business values, reworked some of the team so that the resources were in the right place and everything was situated so that when the team came in the next morning, they were positioned for success. And we made that deliverable. And I'm convinced that if we hadn't made this kind of change, we would not have made that deliverable. And I know there's other folks in the audience that can relate to that kind of experience. How do we keep the momentum going? Well, we go back to our principles and values. Right? Make it visible, inspect it, adapt it. We were successful. We were, we were successful because we actually achieved the intent of Lean Agile, which is to get a group of people together on a team of teams working together towards one goal. And so we wanted to share this with the rest of the enterprise. As we all know, Lean Agile is not just for developers. We wanted to make sure that we bring in more people, start doing, launching more trains, start doing more value stream workshops, Start getting that lean, agile mindset across the entire enterprise. That is one of our primary goals. We actually stated that. That is one of our primary goals, is to have a lean, agile mindset across the entire organization. So that that way, these splash zones that we're talking about, people don't get wet. They understand what is happening. And so you can see the percentages there. We were bringing people in. So we saw the value in making the work visible. We went ahead and took it to an enterprise level. So we're in sustain and improve now. But we're still working on things. So we're working on building our team's expertise. We're working on the ability to prove value to our stakeholders. We're working on DevOps. That's going to that's gonna take some work. Uh, one of the things that we're going to do near term is we had laid out all of our value streams and now we're to the point in terms of maturity that we need to go back and do another scrub of those. 
And I'm pretty happy about the 4.6 information that's coming out because I think that's going to help us with that. Also pretty excited that we're going to be getting a new work environment. You know, I talked about having to do this in the hall. Well, it just so happens our building in Oklahoma City is an earthquake proof. So we're going to get a reno for that, and we're going to be able to design the building to do the kind of work that we're doing, from the big room training, planning activities, down to the team activities. So we're all pretty excited about that. We're going to see that come to fruition over the next couple of years, and I think that's really going to enable us. Finally, one of the things that we've been working on really hard over the last six months or so is that strategic portfolio level. As Joe said, we started at the tactical level and, and we wanted to get stuff going. We had work in flight, we had commitments that had been made, so starting at the tactical level was appropriate for us. But we, had, we have to go back and we're in the process of doing that and doing the, the strategic piece. We're working on the epics, working on the themes, and making sure that all of that aligns so that the individuals can see where they fit into that big picture. So any kind of change has challenges, and, and we face those. Uh, everybody who's doing this is facing challenges, and I think there's uh, empathy in sharing that amongst ourselves. I think that brings us power. I think the federal budget cycle is one of our biggest challenges, and we've been going to school on that. Uh, it, it really strikes me with Dean and Don's conversation this morning about breaking work into chunks so that you can get the flow. That really is part of the core of what we're using in order to tackle this, this programming and budgeting thing. Because we're breaking the work down, but we're funding the arts and funding the throughput for the arts so that we can have those conversations with our stakeholders so that they can understand that, so that they can have the predictability, so that we can really do that federal programming two, three years in advance. That's a tough nut to crack. Uh, also part of the predictability, our teams have been getting smarter and smarter and smarter about capacity. They get, they're getting smarter about being able to estimate work, but they're also being smarter about saying, okay, I have the ability to do that chunk of work in PI next, 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 so that we're getting that predictability for our customers. Another thing we've had to go to school on is contracting and personnel. So we're, we're about a 50-50 Fed contractor mix. We've got great partners at the table with us, but we've had to restructure the way that we do contracting We've had to restructure the way that we do Fed labor accounting so that we've got the transparency back to our customers and how we're charging them for services. That's a lot of work, and I won't say that it's complete yet, but I think we're, we're over the hump. Uh, clarifying the roles and responsibilities between the Feds and the contractors is also part of that work effort. And then the third challenge, I call it uh, enterprise calibration. And I would guess that a lot of y'all can relate to what I'm talking about in terms of it took us a few PIs to get to the point that we understood what's a story, what's a feature, what's an epic, what's a capability. You know, we were doing this up and down thing and trying to figure out where to normalize. Well, once we went through that a couple of times, we've now got that in place. The other thing that as we brought on more arts, we found that we were overwhelming ourselves. We were trying to do all of the arts at once, and both because of um, physical space and because of just mental capacity, we were fine. And by the time we got to the last, last activity, we were out of slits. We had no more brain cells left. So we've done quite a bit of work in terms of sequencing the arts so that they feed each other and they're mutually supportive, but they don't all have to be done at exactly the same time. And that took us a while to figure that out. Some of the insights that we'd like to share. Uh, one, of, one of the things that motivated us to do this in the first place was our knowledge workers were very motivated uh, government and contract employees. They wanted to have a voice in being smarter with government. And I think this structure really has helped that engagement. And fortuitously, 
We had done a Gallup Q12 survey immediately before our SAFE implementation. Those of you who are familiar with it, Gallup measures employee engagement. So we did it before, we did it after, and uh, showed great positive results as a, because of that. Now we're gonna have to continue communications and work on alignment and work on uh, portfolio so that we can continue to leverage that. But our employees are motivated and they like to be able to have that voice. And I like that they kind of know what the swim lanes are. So another thing we talked about, I talked a little bit about, I've heard it as a theme throughout today, is the improved visibility. Our risk management and our decision making has really improved by leaps and bounds. Can't underestimate what that making the work visible, making those dependencies fully visible, and making those risks visible, the payback for that for us has been absolutely huge because we were the result of three different organizations that had merged fairly recently. So there was a lot of work going on that we didn't necessarily know exactly what it was. And when you're cost reimbursable and when you're trying to reduce people's prices, it really is important to know that everybody's working on the most important work. And there's some work that people aren't paying for that shouldn't be done. So that really helped us with that. It helped us with our responsive time to market because we had that predictability. We had fewer surprises. So we had been previously missing releases. We had problems with releases. And that has gotten so much better. And then right at the heart of shared services, as I talked about, are those efficiencies and cost savings. And we really have rolled out the lean mindset across the entire organization, whether it's our media crew or our wireless crew or our business office, the entire organization understands that mindset and that's been a huge change for us. So, we made it to Summit, but we haven't made it to our mountain summit. Right. We've still got quite a bit of work to do, um, but we're still climbing, we're excited about it, we're motivated about it, and we're happy to share our story. At ESC, we have reached one summit. The next summit that we want to conquer is enterprise agility, the business agility. That's where we want to go. Our team is here. Scotty's here, Marshall's here. We'll be around all week long, and we want to extend the hand for anybody that has questions or anybody that wants to gain some knowledge from our experience, you know, that, that reusable knowledge. And you have my information there. Please feel free to go ahead and contact me, and I will contact you as soon as I can. Thank you for coming, and thank you for having, paying attention. Have a great week.